the quicker you can get to the fun, I think the better chance you have of succeeding. I don't know the future how it's gonna uh, right, keep right. up. Can generative AI replace or just be your little assistant that helps you learn? Welcome to the Tom Style Show. Thank you so much, folks. I'm so excited. This is a dream come true. Corey Altoff, the famous author of self-taught programmer, self-taught computer scientist. You know, he, he's working at CompTIA, but he's going to talk a lot about how to get in. If you're not from tech, you want to make it in tech. What's the first step? That scary feeling. He's the man. This is the man you got to follow. This is he's uh, all over social media or uh, you know you follow it by his book. <laughs> you know, it's on Amazon. But uh, but Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, th thank you for uh, being with us. Now now Corey, tell us a little bit about this journey. The self-taught before you even wrote the book. Like how did this happen? Yeah, so I did go to school. I studied political science at Clemson University and I graduated and you know, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, and I felt like the, I wasn't like very happy with the opportunities that you know I was I was being that like the kind of jobs I could get like, yeah. at the time, right? Yeah. So I, like I mentioned earlier, I I come from Silicon Valley, and so I had gone back home and I stayed yeah. with my parents, and just being surrounded by it, I decided you know all right, why yeah. why don't I give learning a program a shot? I had actually tried in college and failed. Uh, like I dropped the class; it was super intimidating, yeah. And so I gave up. I didn't think it was for me. But I decided to give it one more chance. So I started, I bought a bunch of books and courses. I remember Think Python is the first book oh. I ever bought. So I bought a book called Think Python, started getting into Python, and I fell in love with programming. Yeah, the, the, the second time I tried because there wasn't as much pressure. It wasn't in like yeah. a classroom environment with a lot of assignments and stuff. And so ended up learning how to program. It took me a year, and then I got the, the job at eBay as a software engineer. Man, so you're like an inspiration for <laughs> folks. This is because you know a lot, a lot of us when when we, we start college, we don't know what we're gonna uh -huh. study. And, right. And, and and for me, this is I'm telling you from experience. I studied aerospace engineering because it showed up on top because it starts with A and in the engineering. So I studied that. I wasn't too much into it. And later on, I I, I you know went to do software, went to do many other things. And, uh, you know, it, it's you don't really know when you start, right? Mm. And uh, the other thing with the school, the curriculum, uh, when I, I took a couple of programming classes for, for the engineering side of things. But when you go into the computer science, the data structures, I took a data structures class and I dropped out of that class. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I, I was like, it's so hard, right? Like data structures. Yeah. yeah, I mean. And most kids just pretend or they're really good or they're so uh -huh. advanced. Uh -huh. It's an intimidating situation. Oh, yeah. Right, sure. mm -hmm. but so your book, people can buy, study in their own time, and I actually read a couple of uh, whatever was freely available on Amazon before I was coming <laughs> here. So I was like, "Wow, the way you introduce the topics is just so much relatable." Oh, okay. right. Thank you. It, and and uh, but the other question is, how did you know to get into Python? Because it's much easier to get into Python compared to if you started with a Java or C. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'd done some research and yeah, uh -huh. found that, that everyone said that Python was a lot easier yeah. to learn than especially And it's super like popular. Yeah, it's it is. Like it's really popular. It's yeah. crazy popular yeah. now, especially with the rise of AI. Yeah, yeah. It's the dominating yeah. force. And a lot of colleges teach Java, which you know I think is problematic. So. Yeah, that is problematic. I think you gotta you gotta get a PhD, man. You gotta be <laughs> teaching. Yeah, you <laughs> that's what I want to see. But uh, so so self-taught. Uh, I'm actually supposed to do some guest lecturing at CompTIA, actually. So. We're trying to set that up. We we have That's educational programs like training programs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is it like online or is it how is? Uh, we have we have online. Uh, we we mostly focus on online right now, but we have done some in person classes. Oh, yeah. okay. Because you know, CompTIA. Uh, <laughs> I gotta tell you, when I uh, uh, before going to college, my dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, signed me up for the A plus certification for oh, CompTIA. Nice, That's you know, awesome. because he be, we, we are from the medical side of family, so so you know he said he, computers are rising. Yeah. You should learn some computer, and so it's basically that time the laptops are very few, so you gotta pick up the RAM and you know the hard drive, and CompTIA had different programs. And and so I, I that's all I remember about CompTIA. I didn't know they were into. So what are the things in CompTIA now that? Yeah, does? we got 
we've got A plus, we've got cybersecurity, cloud stuff, data. Yeah, a lot of lot of different career paths. Sure, and, sure. and that's actually something I think people don't take into consideration enough in terms yeah. of like self taught. Like there's cybers, you know, so yeah. popular right now. And and I'm actually hearing more and more people being like, Oh, I'm either gonna do software engineering or get into cyber. But you know, and you got IT, like help desk type stuff, which I think is super helpful and not enough people consider that if you don't want to go straight into like software engineering yeah. to like get a start by doing like a plus and going into just like a help desk role and then yeah. getting some like Linux basics and stuff like that. Yeah. And then sort of transitioning over to software engineer or whatever you want to do or continuing in it. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's so many different paths. I don't know that people always appreciate the different paths, um, yeah. you know, that are available aside from just, aside from just coding. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. There's just so many, even uh, nowadays uh, or a few years back, even the deployment in AWS and Google cloud, that uh, uh, DevOps, mm -hmm. that right? Means, yeah, That's right. you don't you need to write some shell code, some Linux, but but it's not your developing programs. Right? Uh -huh. It's not programming generally. But mm -hmm. they, those are as high paying, or even sometimes right. more high yeah, paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's right. A lot, like, there's so, a lot of options for sure. Yeah. So now somebody getting started. This this is one question I always had. Um, I work with a lot of uh, uh, students that are recent graduates. So they graduate, and then we have extensive programs, we teach them Java, or we, uh, or we do the front end, the React, and you know, those frameworks. Once we teach them, and then we you know, uh, uh, put them on projects for these large companies where you know, they have certain internal projects, et cetera. Now, one of the thing I have seen, kids that are from computer science background, some of them are absolutely amazing, they're great. A lot of them don't take it seriously. Huh. A lot of mechanical engineers with no programming mm -hmm. or uh, students from other uh, majors, including communications, they come in, they take it seriously, they go through the program, they end up uh, clearing the, the, the written, uh, the, the tests, the interviews faster than anybody else. Huh, that's interesting. And that reminded me because, you know, you also have gone through the, you know, political science and then transitioned to computer science. And the self-taught mentality, right? That is, I think, a lot more effective than somebody else teaching you mm -hmm. the topic. Yeah. What's your thought on yeah, that? Yeah, I, mean, I think with software engineering and IT and just in general, yeah. you have to love to learn, right? And so anyone that c can bring that passion to learning, I think, yeah. will be have a great career because you know, there's always new frameworks. There's always new programming languages. There's always new things that you have to learn. So you have to just always have that mentality that like, I'm, I'm always learning, I'm always teaching myself new stuff. And I think that's how you really thrive in that, in that industry. It's just, you know, like right now I'm studying generative AI, you know, just oh. you know, trying to, to learn about it and, yeah, yeah. and just always learning new stuff. You know, I think yeah. you just always have to be studying. Um, so yeah. you're kind of a person who challenges himself always, you need new things. <laughs> I try to. Yeah. That, that's your thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I see. And, and the, I, I think if you're learning, the, if you're getting into the AI side. I'm very beginner still. The, the, the self-taught AI is coming, yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> very beginner, but it's interesting, you know, it's, it's yeah. fun to, to learn. I love learning new things. So now in this world of AI, a lot of folks are saying, forget front end, mm -hmm. forget all of that, uh, because uh, if you can write good enough prompts, uh -huh. you should be able to get those done. Focus on back end. Uh -huh. um, but you know, uh, but but your self taught uh, the book uh -huh. that gives people introduction to Python. Mm -hmm. They can write fairly yeah. mm -hmm. complex programs yeah, in yeah. Python. Mm -hmm. And also then the 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 other one is you know that gives the data structure yeah, the theoretical knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So that they, they can kind of keep up the conversation or uh -huh. get stuck and they know where to look. Uh -huh. Right, kind of. So basically, if you read those two books, you're pretty much good for a senior software engineer in your career. Uh, maybe junior. junior <laughs> I don't know about like junior. starting from junior. Yeah, sorry, it's like more to get you to like yeah. a junior level. Yeah. Junior level, and yeah. then if you continue that learning, uh -huh. and then you can get there. But uh, so this, this, what's your thought on this prompt engineering? This AI people are just focusing on prompt instead of writing the code. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a super useful tool, yeah. um, and and it, it can help a lot. But yeah. you know, I don't know about like forgetting about front end development yet. Like I don't, I don't know. But yeah, 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 yeah. Like well, I guess, yeah. I guess we'll see. But man, I mean, yeah, all that the generative AI is super impressive. Yeah. You know, um, I'm, I'm writing an article right now actually for the CompTIA blog about about AI and you know whether it replace software. Engineers or not, but you know, I think right now, 
it's just making them more effective, right? Like, yeah. you know, maybe 20, I, I saw, I forget who it was, but I'm quoting someone that, that said they felt like they were like 25% more effective, you know, from, from uh, using it. That, that is pretty much where right. it, it, people yeah. say 30%. Right. Even but it's, more, it's, yeah, not right. like, oh, like I just, you know. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> I was actually like trying to get ChatGPT to write like really advanced stuff just to see. Uh-huh. And it's like, I mean, for, for example, if you just go in and you say like, build build like a search engine right yeah. you know like, oh wow. it's interesting it can't you know it can't do that yeah, yeah. Fun, which i guess is obvious to some people but i was like i wonder what it would do you know if you like told it to like to do that so not quite there yet um yeah that's the thing i wonder all the time i think of it what it would do right yeah. because it always keeps on doing different things mm-hmm. with the similar prompts based on the information provided before so it, it, this this is i'm not very much into using that i just plain old google things and find things on Stack Overflow, <laughs> but uh, you know, a lot of folks for, but you know, for our case, let's even if you're, whenever writing the pro, uh, Python book or anything, uh, any question we had, generally we used to say, just Google it. Uh-huh. Because somebody had the same problem before right, you right. and they put it uh, somewhere on the forums, mm-hmm. right? right, right. Uh, now these kids are, are mostly, they're asking chat GPT, yeah, right? Saying, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I don't know, is it a good thing, bad thing? I don't know because Chat GPT gives you a very curated answer, mm-hmm. whereas the art of going through many, many forums and trying to figure out why and, you know, try, uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I checked out, <laughs> I did the beta, beta for Conmigo. Have you seen that for Khan Academy? It's like their, oh, the like, Khan? yeah, it's like their generative AI oh. learning helper. Um, and it was cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, I, I'm, I'm interested to see, like, can generative AI replace or just be your little assistant that helps you learn. And like, mm. how effective is it? You, I was sitting there trying to like learn how to code through generative AI. And it's certainly a different experience than anything I've ever done. And I, I don't know, I'd like to see how students respond to that. But if you sit there and you're like, what? Like, teach me how to program. It's like, okay, yeah. like, you know, you're just like talking to this like robot. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> you know, uh, like here's like a line of Python. And like, yeah. you're like, okay, like what's next? And it's like, this is how you write a Python. I don't know, it's like super interesting, but yeah. I don't know. I'm, we've been learning, you know, most of us have been learning in one way for so long, right? Like yeah. you have a teacher and they sit yeah. and they lecture and you watch and whatever. So to like just sit and talk to like an AI yeah. is like a very different experience. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that all plays out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's very interesting. But so so right now you are, uh, but, but CompTIA, are you uh, guys focusing on anything uh, that's recent coming up? You're... Yeah, we have, a, we have a full stock web development course coming out yeah, oh. that I've been working on. Yeah. So, wow. So that's really, your uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, okay. That's it. so full stack. Are you guys gonna do uh, Python or Java, and then do some front end of the JavaScript? Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be JavaScript and some. Yeah, knowledge. yeah. Well, uh, the, the all the details haven't been exactly worked out, so yeah. won't say. But but it's exciting. And are you I'm guys excited. gonna do React or Vue or any of those frameworks? Uh, I'm probably. I would say React. Probably yeah. React. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the the? Because I was very. Pro React, I was uh-huh. bullish, and uh-huh. and it paid off well for me uh, in the last many years for our for uh-huh. our engineers. I don't know the future how it's gonna uh, right, keep right. up. So, uh, what's your thought on that? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no that's idea. a weird no question. <laughs> <laughs> because that's that's the Mark Zuckerberg thing, right? The Facebook. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. You know, so it's the sometimes I say, okay, if his future is good, it's gonna be fine, right? right. <laughs> right? Yeah. What's gonna replace it? Uh, because you know, so far it's just so advanced already. There's yeah. so much stuff already in there. But the Python, that's that's your thing. So for anybody starting out, mm-hmm. your recommendation is go with Python. Yeah, either Python or JavaScript. I think that's like a yeah. personal decision. But okay. Okay. I personally like starting with Python. So uh, yeah, uh, I I know people. Well, a lot of them would be reading the books. You you have a community of like a quarter million. Uh, yeah, we just hit three hundred thousand like today. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. On the Facebook group, so. So these developers are based, uh, are the self-taught? Yeah, self-taught. Yeah, they're all self-taught. Wow. And uh, so you, you got a big community. Yeah, it's a really cool community. Yeah, I just posted today looking for moderators. So if anyone's watching this and wants <laughs> to be a moderator, we need some help because I just went through like 100 posts today. <laughs> I was trying to like, you know, accept or decline to yeah. post in the group. And, uh, yeah, it's a really cool community. Wow. So you're managing that. Mm-hmm. You have the, 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 the you know, books and you're always keeping up with new things. And then the CompTIA, they have the full stack uh, program, which you're uh, yeah, know, uh, on focusing that. on mm-hmm. that. You have some instructions coming up. Uh, man, how, how do you keep up with that? It's just so many things. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just fun, you know? So it doesn't feel like work you know, when, it, when you're having fun. So I get to come do stuff like this as part of my job. I mean, it's yeah. pretty awesome. 
So, so you, yeah, what would you say in terms of、uh, are you loving this world of programming world? Are you, are you like, oh my god, I found my passion? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I definitely love really? it. Really?、Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's really fun, and yeah, no, I love my job. I like helping people get into tech too, right? So you know. That's something、no、we gotta focus and, on. Yeah, so, yeah. what's your recommendation on that? Let's say I am、uh, graduating from、yeah. a different major, or、mm-hmm. the other thing is, which is very important. A lot of times, people will say, "Oh, okay, somebody study a different major. Let's study something else. Go in."、Uh, I have a few founders on my show,、uh, and they are non-tech founders.、Uh-huh. And a lot of times, they found a CTO or a tech founder or an offshore company, which they got burned many times, etc., etc. And they have this. This feeling that they really want to learn,、mm-hmm. but the startup life—it's just so fast.、Mm-hmm. You know, you got to go one after another. You got to raise money. You got to do so many things, and they feel like, should I invest that time? Should I take out that time?、Uh-huh. What would you say to that? To、uh, us, or, to a startup founder that's thinking they yeah they don't know how to learn a non tech founder how to get、uh, you know maybe they buy actively your, doing a startup yeah no <laughs> I'd probably say no just being honest. <laughs> I don't、yeah. think that's a good investment of your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because because what? I don't know. You're probably not going to like get good enough to like while you're doing it. Like I would say, you should do that before. Yeah, start your、yeah. startup. But I think like once you're already in it, you're working eighty hours, ninety hours a week, or whatever. I don't know if you're going to have <laughs> enough time to like learn how to program well enough to make a contribution, right? Like I think、yeah. your time would probably be spent.、That's、you know, a, that's a very. But I mean, you can think about like. All right. Well, then I kind of know how stuff works, and but I don't know. I would probably just leave that to someone who already. Already. I don't know. That might be a controversial answer. I don't、yeah. know. But just no, like that's my that, gut instinct. That's a good perspective. You know, that's a good perspective because you're thinking from the efficiency side of、mm-hmm. it. Right. Because、uh, oh, okay, you're、uh, took a bunch of other people's money, and now you're、yeah. learning something, so you're not really effectively utilizing. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I see the point.、Uh, now that founder, for his his or her next startup. Wants to be proficient in Python.、Mm-hmm. How long would it take? And he, he or she learned about you. I think six. I can keep doing like six, six months. months. Yeah. So they gotta、uh, like full time six months. They gotta go、uh, yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Okay. okay. But and that's also where things like the full stack web development course that we're working on comes in because I think you can do it faster. Like, I think it takes longer if you're doing it completely on your own. But if you're in a more structured environment, I think you can go faster. You know, I think I would have been able to do it a lot faster if I had more structure. So. Yeah, you know, you have to weigh like the cost versus you know how effective you're going to be versus motivation, right? Like you're probably more you're probably more likely to to finish, I think, a program、yeah. when you've actually like, put money down and you know、yeah. you have like classmates and a teacher and stuff like that. You're as opposed it takes a lot of discipline to just like be sitting、yeah. alone at home like every day, you know, and not、yeah. not like give up. Yeah, so because that is that is another big problem because、um, everybody. In my lifetime, I wanted to learn so many things and learned absolutely nothing of those, <laughs> you know, because it's the motivation is top notch the first day,、uh-huh. the second day, right, right, day right. and then it it goes downhill from there,、yeah. right? And and then the problem with the programming world is when somebody starts your book, it's fairly simple, conversational. It's、mm-hmm. it's, it's、uh, so the first few days is gonna go pretty amazing.、Mm-hmm. Once the hard stuff starts to come in, and by then your motivation goes down, and、yeah. then the self-taught people kind of falls off. But that's where I think you have the community. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of people like being like, "I'm on my hundredth day of code," and like you know, two hundred or whatever. Yeah, and like motivating each other. And yeah, I think community can be really helpful for that for sure. So,、uh, so the the self-taught programmer. Anything else about that book? That you want, you want your、uh, the audience that haven't <laughs> learned yet, but they are like, oh, well, yeah. I try to make it fun. I mean, I think that's a big thing. Like what we were talking about earlier with learning how to program in college, and、yeah. you know, I've heard stories of people like doing like a lot of math or like having to learn like binary before they got into anything. And I think as、yeah. like I do a lot of games, like Hangman and stuff. Like is one of the first things that you build, and just like the the fun, the the quicker you can get to the fun, I think the better chance you have of succeeding, right? So you really want like programming is fun, and so you、yeah. you want to you want to get to the fun stuff, and if you can get to the fun stuff as fast as possible, yeah, I think you're more likely to stick with it and not give up. So oh, this is fun. This doesn't seem like this、yeah. kind of like you know playing a video game or something. But and that's another thing I come to that we talk a lot about is, you know, you don't have to be really good at math to get into tech. I think、yeah. that's a common misconception, something that holds、yeah. people back. Like even software engineering, IT, like getting A plus, like you don't have to be a, certainly don't have to be like a math whiz to. To get into that,、yeah. and, and and that's something we need to. I think we're trying to address and to get rid of that misconception. 
wow, yeah, that that's gonna be so helpful, man. This is this is I love that because a lot of people have this a really stupid idea that you have to be a math whiz yeah. to get into uh, any kind of engineering or computer science. Right. But I can literally tell you, you can be terrible at math and pretty do yeah. pretty well. Right, for sure. Uh, if you're good, that can have yeah. certain benefit. Yeah, for sure. And there's certain like I think there's certain parts of software engineering, yeah. like certain jobs where you'd have to have like that math background. But yeah. the, if you go into web development, you know, I think you don't necessarily have to be very good. Yeah. You don't have to be good at math. I mean, in your second book for yeah. the uh, for the algorithm side uh -huh. or the data structures, that I think you're looking for somebody who has background, some background in math. A little bit, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but again, like it, I don't think there's anything more advanced than just basic yeah. math in there. You know, yeah. it's not you know you're doing that like, calculus or anything you know like that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's some tricky concepts. I think data structures and algorithms can be can be hard, but it's 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 not it's not a huge you know like linked lists and stuff. I mean, it's not like uh, trees and all that stuff. It's yeah. not like a huge amount of math involved, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, no, that that makes sense. So uh, so the first book uh, that that that's the the self taught Python, and uh, so once 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 people get into that, you also have included, I think, uh, some sort of test so that people are ready for the written test uh, when they apply for jobs. Written test, which written test? Uh, or, or the OA, the, 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 what are these called, assessments, uh, some of those. Uh, oh, oh, you mean like a technical interview? Yeah, the technical. Yeah, that's what the, the second book really focuses on. It's like, oh. it's how to pass a technical interview, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. so the first one, you get the fundamentals. Yeah. Second one, how to pass a second, uh, technical yeah, interviews. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, but did, did you need that uh, before before you went to eBay or? or yeah, or, well, before I went to, 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 well, luckily with my eBay interview, I don't think, I'm trying to remember. I've had to pass several technical interviews. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what motivated me to want to, to write that because uh, it's it's definitely takes a so lot of preparation. So we need to we need to give you newer challenges <laughs> so that you go ahead. I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah, now we got like, it. Maybe another... invert a binary tree right now <laughs> on, a, on a whiteboard or something. <laughs> yeah, we did. I, I think I think you you are you're focused on uh, on on uh, challenging things that that's kind of uh, drives you. Mm -hmm. But uh, so. Now, uh, did, did you also do any startup or any, any kind of, because you had something, I, I, I think you uh, tried to create something on your own uh, uh, from the startup side? Uh, I worked at a startup okay. um, and I've done some like little things, but yeah. nothing, nothing huge. Um, nice, yeah. nice. So n now, now you're fully remote in, in Com uh, Comptia. Uh -huh. And uh, so this is, uh, th that's another thing. Uh, this topic, you know, but pretty controversial in terms of some CEOs like, no, they got to be at least even Facebook banned full remote. They are like, mm -hmm. OK, three days, you got to be on site. Mm -hmm. What's your thought on this remote uh, culture? The, uh, I love it. I mean, I think remote culture is great. So I think you're going to be just as effective. Yeah. I think you'd be more effective. You're probably more efficient for yeah, sure. Yeah, more, yeah, right? exactly. With your time yeah. and how to allocate things, yeah. how to learn and uh, but then the, the the other problem with that is the motivation side of things, mm -hmm. right? That uh, you may not because when you are with other people, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know everybody is doing trying to do different things. You're motivated. You gotta deliver the deliveries, things like that. Uh, so that that side. But I think the deliverables for the software engineer are always there. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a matter of well, if you have well set goals then yeah. I don't think it should matter too much whether you're in person or, or not but yeah you know, I haven't looked at a lot of the data on all this stuff but you know I, I just know from my own personal experience yeah. I really like working remote and especially the company we have a lot of conferences so I'm usually it's a nice mixture that, that I get to go to the conferences every you know a few months and see people from the company and stuff yeah. so I like I like that aspect of it too yeah that's uh how about the brainstorming side of things like, uh, you know, sitting in a room talking about the, or the whiteboarding. Yeah, yeah, I think that's some stuff that you miss out on. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely, there's you know, there's pros and cons yeah, for sure. There, yeah, there's, there's some, yeah, I, I see. But for, for the software engineers in general, I would say it works out pretty well. Yeah, yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but for, for some other jobs, I think that could be difficult. That mm -hmm. requires client interaction. That would be impossible because, yeah. you know, they got a, a, a podcast and things like that, uh -huh. right? Because... Right. Without in person, we had some some with the uh, the Zoom calls, and I I hated that. Uh -huh. I'm like looking at TV and all uh -huh. that. Yeah, but 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 you know, in person, that it, it's kind of. But that's also a time commitment. You got to mm -hmm. take out the time. But the commute, especially LA, <laughs> so you know those those are there. But so so what's next? Uh, well, what's next? Are you uh, working on that? Uh, you know, 
you're going to surprise us probably a couple of years later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think, I guess. You know, the full stack thing is what I'm what I'm That's like, the, I yeah. see as like the big, like, you know, thing I'm really okay. excited about right now. And that, that, that is really important. I, th I think that's, that's one of the... Yeah, this will be our first like coding, you know, program, training program. So. When is that coming up? Not sure yet, but you know... Probably I, six months to a year yeah, or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, I'm hoping something like that, yeah. Wow, that would be, that would be really good because CompTIA is not just popular in America, it's popular uh, in other countries. Right, yeah. It's <laughs> very popular in, 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 a, in many countries, you know, the A-plus certification, that's a big deal. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think once they bring up the full stack... Right. It's, it's going to give the company a very uh, yeah. different perspective. And it gives people two options. I mean, if you don't feel like you're ready to get into software engineering, you can do A+. Plus. If otherwise, yeah. you know, go into, into software engineering. And yeah, so I think yeah. cyber. So there's so many options. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a cool time cyber. to be at CompTIA right now, for sure. Yeah. I think, I, th I think after full stack, you might do cyber or AI, some of, some of those things. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm super interested. Yeah, so I've been looking a lot into to AI. Uh, yeah. A lot of interesting things there. So. Nice, nice. How do you... Uh, now... This is my personal question. I always thought about that. You know, so you're an author, you're writing things, so you got to write things down or, you know, form your thoughts. At the same time, you got to do a lot of experimentation yourself that you'll be writing about or, you know, general exper experimentation. And then you have certain deliverables for the company. How do you, like, day-to-day -day activity, how do you allocate the time? Uh, what's your thought process on that? On, like, time management? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um... The, the, like the prioritize, how do you... Yeah, have you heard of Getting Things Done? No. Really? Okay, you got to read it. It's like <laughs> my favorite book. I've read it like three times. It's by David oh. Allen. But yeah, it's called Getting Things Done. It's, it's a very popular business productivity book. But oh. I swear by the system. A lot of people do. And I've been using it for like three years. And oh. it's a whole time. It's a, whole, it's a system for like prioritizing and like mm. keeping track of everything. So the idea... Well, one of the main ideas is that you don't keep anything in your head. So everything goes, I have a bunch of apps that I, I'm super, oh. you found like my thing that I'm like super into. So oh. I'm into, uh, I'm into really into getting things done and uh, product, uh, personal knowledge management. Okay. So there's, um, now there's this thing I, I can't, I'm going to push it to the word. It's like Zettel Kasten. Uh, it, it's, um, but it's, it's this personal knowledge management thing where uh, it's a system for taking notes. But I combined all this stuff, uh, like I do getting things done combined with that. Yeah. And, and it's super helpful. But so basically you turn everything, you have an inbox. And so anything that comes that you have to do, right? Like it's just immediately, like whether you get a piece of mail or whether your boss sends you a message on Slack and it's like, you need to do X, Y, and Z. You throw yeah. everything into an inbox immediately. And then you turn, you go through later and you turn them into projects. And then like each project has, uh, you know, what you need to do in it. And then there, you have to have a reminder system and, and a calendar and it's like a whole thing, but yeah, yeah I, I'm not going to be able to, to okay. fully explain the entire concept, yeah. but like when you put it all together, then you don't ever have to think of anything in your head. Like it's just all like, you know, on your phone or your computer or whatever, like you could use it. You guys, you could do it when like using paper too, but. That's that's what I use. I don't know. Yeah, I recommend yeah. checking that that book out. It's it's. Good. You were totally built like a software engineer. <laughs> this is like uh, you're a walking, yeah. talking engineer, man. This is uh, because that, that I, I have my software folks. They think very similarly. They gotta yeah. put everything down. It, in my but what I do is I write them down all on my notes, and uh -huh. then uh, I know the, and uh, and do the prioritizing. That way I know this one to do, but I don't go too much in depth uh -huh. uh, because I'm too lazy. <laughs> you know, so I just put it there. I'm like, okay, I got to do this one, this one. Yeah. So that at least I don't forget that existed. But the, but the process you explained, I, I think that's a lot more helpful when you're working on a number of things that mm -hmm. uh, requires brain power mm -hmm. to you know go full on. Yeah. So that, that, that's very interesting. And OmniFocus, that's the app I use. Omnifocus. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's cool. You got it. You got and Obsidian. Omnifocus, focus, and Obsidian. Obsidian for note taking. Okay. I've tried like every, <laughs> every. Wow. I'm not, I'm, I've tried a lot, and yeah. was a, Obsidian's really cool. Uh, if you haven't tried that, it's for for note taking. You can, it has like plugins, so people write programs for it, and you wow. and you go through and and like you can add plugins to your yeah. note taking app, and it's super. It's I like it. Wow, man, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> that, that, that's very, probably you're going to come up with your own productivity <laughs> yeah, app see. because you're very, very much into productivity and efficiency. So uh, that, 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 that could be, that could be interesting. Now, now uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, so that you have the box and you have the programs, you have, uh, how, how about like the personal time? Do you do anything else other than coding or you're like 100%? <laughs> I, like, I play basketball. 
Oh, you're a basketball yeah. fan. I got into it just recently. My friend just had this. After up. LeBron came in? <laughs> LeBron in LA. We got <laughs> uh, but yeah, I started playing pool. Yeah, recently. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, what else I do? Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, you, you know, I, for, from... from uh, listening to you, mm. if I were, you know, in, yeah. in, in Camtia or any of the, yeah. uh, those guys, I would be like, yeah. this guy deserves a total <laughs> raise. Oh, hey, <laughs> He's I, all into productivity. I have, a, I have two kids, too, that are young, so oh, I... Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you also have a famous wife, you know, uh, so that's... Uh, but, but so this is, this is a lot. This is a lot. You need a lot of productivity to, uh, yeah, productivity tools and a lot of efficient strategy uh-huh. uh, to, to get through this. So now a couple of uh, theoretical, uh, you know, just, just futuristic questions that uh, what's your thought on. One thing I have seen, a lot of AI startups that came on my show, they're talking about AI of this or basically chat GPT or similar LLM they're using in the back end to give a result that's pretty well presented, mm-hmm. right? Uh, do you think it's like that dot-com bubble <laughs> or that we're living in an AI bubble and later on we look back and we're like, oh my God, what are we doing? What's your thought on that? If we're in an AI bubble? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, no, I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, it's... That's yeah. That, that that you know. That's you cannot predict the future. <laughs> yeah. That's like you know. What do you want me to do, Tom? I, the yeah. I mean, I think that I I think with AI, it's there's so much hype around it. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, I use it so much, and I think with yeah. some of the other stuff that's been hyped a lot, I didn't actually use it. If that makes sense, like on a daily basis, yeah. like specifically, you know. Yeah. Cryptocurrency, for example. Like, oh, I, yeah. I was super hyped, but then at the end of the day, like, I wasn't a person who was using cryptocurrency, like, on a daily basis. And I know there's, like, all these yeah. arguments, but I'm just making the point that with, with AI, like, I think it's interesting that that's something I've actually adopted into yeah. almost daily use, yeah. which to me makes it seem like there's really a lot of value there. So I don't yeah. know if, if it's a bubble or, or anything like that. And not to say that cryptocurrency doesn't have have value but but i think that this is interesting in how widely adopted yeah it's becoming so because uh i i think you're right on because as long as it's is it useful for you sure it's useful for me right useful for you useful for even edwin editing videos mm-hmm. so of course there's some use to it so whether it's too high too low right. we don't know but there is a use yeah right I, I think that's that's a very good way of thinking about and it i think it certainly is going to sh- it seems to me as if it's going to change the world you know um yeah so yeah yeah that's so uh, that, that, that's 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 the next thing is you know like how much more influential is it going to be in our life because right now we talk about like 20 30 percent uh productivity increase etc so it's making us better in right. getting things done but yeah i think with, with writing i mean I think oh, it's yeah. going to make a huge yeah. difference. And, and, you know, I, I've heard people say that 90% of content will, you know, be created by, by I, I mean, who knows, but yeah. I think, I mean, I think it'll change. I think it's going to change a lot, but yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not quite the futurist. So yeah, <laughs> I'm probably no, getting out uh, of yeah, my yeah. <laughs> zone of expertise here, but yeah, it seems like it's, it's very exciting. I, I just, I like to just yeah. see what's happening and, and keep up. And it's fun to, it's fun to just see everything that's, that's happening. So, uh, so that brings up the next thing is, uh, you know, we talked about basic programming, learning the, the, learning the process. Now there's this new term coming up that prompt engineering mm-hmm. or like writing good prompt, mm-hmm. basically. Uh, is that a thing or is that? You know? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I noticed that when I'm using yeah, yeah. generative AI that the results are so different depending on what you say and then you kind of have to like tweak yeah. stuff. So yeah, I, I definitely think that would be a thing, but yeah, I, I always think like how difficult is prompting, but I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, cause like it's yeah. a, if we're going to go get like a four year degree in like prompt engineering, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's that difficult. So I have kind of a hard time like buying into yeah. that. That's like, it could gonna, be a college I, course. Yeah, yeah, Max, yeah, yeah. Right? Right, yeah. That, that could yeah, happen. Yeah, you could get like, some training in it, but right. like, it just doesn't seem like that difficult, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, the, yeah, that, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, because uh, uh, I, th- I think even Wall Street Journal had an article like the $900,000 AI job is here or something like that. I didn't read the whole thing, so uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know what it was all about. <laughs> but I was like, whoa, really? Right, oh, I think I God. saw that headline. Yeah, just, just everybody coming up with something yeah. new. And then 
you know, the next question will be asking a few years later, what do you mean by everybody? Maybe the AI came up with it, uh -huh. <laughs> right? So you never know. So that's uh, so. And they also, you know, have, I, I'm pretty sure they've had million dollar software engineering jobs too. Yeah, without AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And those are, you know, like a lot of those are very hardcore C and yeah, the yeah. networks. You know, a lot of those things that people did it ancient times yeah. <laughs> when computers came along. They're doing it today because nobody can replace that, right? So you know that that's uh, and then the other thing is. Uh, Cloud used to be pretty big, but now it's kind of uh, overshadowed by the AI yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just overshadowing but everything. I always ask this question, are we going to be living in a world where it's only your AWS, Google Cloud, and uh, you know Microsoft Azure that's somehow good? Uh, so these three going to control all the com cloud computing? Is that? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I cannot get my head around it. I'm like. Wow, that is, you know, but Apple should have thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, it's pretty impressive that Amazon even ever went into that. Yeah, and they went before everybody else. And before everyone else, yeah, right? that's that, great. That's just that's crazy. crazy. Uh, but you, you are into AWS or you do more Google Cloud or Azure? More AWS and we use. Pretty much everybody, right? Uh, I, we I, use I, Microsoft for CompTIA, so. Oh, that, okay, okay, because if you have the, because they are also integrating the teams and all that, so mm -hmm. they make it more integrated. So, yeah, that, 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 that's something that uh, this, this cloud. Man, your, your thoughts on so many things that. Uh, it, it, <laughs> Doing you, my best. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> but, you you got to come back. You got to <laughs> come back and tell us your yeah. new things. Okay. Because yeah. you have eye for these new things, because Python, oh, uh -huh. when did you write the Python book? 2017, the beginning, like to the end of 2016, it was like December. So 2017, I think you were one of the pioneers into the how popular this Python is going to be. Because I started hearing everybody, uh -huh. even they were uh, doing uh -huh. uh, Java or right, they were right, doing other yeah. things. They got into Python in around 2020 during the pandemic time. Yeah. So you were like three years before them. You wrote a book already. Yeah. So so man, uh, I, I I think I'll, you're gonna. I'll, I'll give myself credit for being ahead of the the self talk curve. <laughs> like people oh. were talk, we were talking about that too much. I think uh, self taught yeah. the self taught. You're, you're the leader of the <laughs> oh, self taught thanks. coding community. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> or or aspiring to be a leader. Yeah, you know, oh, you. About, about to be there. But you know, uh, thank you, Corey. This yeah. is this is an honor to oh, have you. you so and much. you got to come back. And be a regular on oh, our right, show. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm only an hour away, so anytime you want oh, me back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that would be awesome. I have a gift for you. Oh, awesome. um, let me see where it is. Uh, let me let me find it. Ugh. Oh, behind me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. I. I, I uh... Oh wow. What is that? Oh, that's the blue label. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. This so, is awesome. Thank I, you. I, I thought I told this Edwin is... we need to give him some sort of alcohol. That's so nice of you. He is always in productivity. We need to calm him down. <laughs> I love whiskey, so this is amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, my actually one of my coworkers, Ron Kohler. <laughs> I'll share this with you. He's a huge whiskey. He's a, he's a huge whiskey person. Oh really? And, uh, yeah, yeah. So he's um, yeah. I'll drink this with him. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. That's Corey, really nice thank you. Awesome. Appreciate thank you so much it. for having me. And, and folks, you guys got to uh, check out his book, oh. Self Taught. Even if you have nothing to do with programming, I'd say, you know, just knowing the thought process that goes on behind writing up code is beautiful. It'll help you in so many other things. If you never want to go into Python, don't worry. Just read the book. At least read some of it. If you don't want to read the whole thing, but you know, check it out. Join the community on Facebook. Three hundred thousand users already yeah. there. So and and, and uh, you know, Corey, uh, check 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 uh, check him out on uh, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. Instagram, yeah, all the social media. Corey Altoff. Yeah. Thank you, Corey. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate, appreciate it. Awesome.